Good afternoon, everyone. You're all familiar with the Mayans. Did you know they had a hundred year dark ages? This was brought on by the eruption of El Chichon, dropping temperatures across the northern hemisphere by at least 2C. Now, was it a single eruption? It also took down what was left of the Roman Empire and collapsed the Wei Dynasty in China as well. That single eruption pushing ash so far over into Europe that it dropped temperatures there. The Rabul caldera also erupting at the same time. So it was not a single eruption. It was a set of volcanoes going off for a couple of years. John Casey, the solar seismic connection, planetary geometry. You can calculate and predict these grand solar minimums. We are entering one now. Expect more volcanism. And please join me on Mini Ice Age Conversations for episode number 22 with Ted Marshall Dunn from Omega Gardens. It's a rotary hydroponic system, the way we're going to evolve our food growing technologies so we can survive this grand solar minimum. And while you're watching, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030. Almost everybody on planet Earth is familiar with the Maya, the calendar round, but not so many people are familiar with the 100-year Mayan Dark Ages. New study out pegging a massive eruption of El Chinchon around 540 AD. So much ejecta from this volcano that it created eight foot deep layers around Central America and was responsible for temperature drops across the Northern Hemisphere. El Chinchon, Southern Mexico here on the map for you. This was followed by another paper, Climatic and Societal Impacts in a Volcanic Double Event During the Dawn of the Middle Ages. Global temperatures dropping to C. You can see it clearly here on the temperature reconstruction. Such an effect in Northern Europe, such an effect in the northern part of the United States and Canada up near Greenland as well. These were separate events, a chain of eruptions from 536 to 545 as we entered the late antique Little Ice Age. It had devastating effects on the crop production across Europe, which ushered in the very end of the Roman Empire. European temperatures and the ability for agricultural production declined significantly during this time. And taking a look at the European Alps and the Russian Altai Mountains reconstruction, you'll see the same fingerprint of drop in temperature right around 540. This also was the end of the Northern Wei Dynasty, ushering in the Chun, which quickly collapsed after that. And you'll see where we are on the far right at 2024 AD with the planetary geometry, 578 in the center and then 540. The Rabaul Caldera in Papua New Guinea also erupting at the same time. So it was not just the Central American eruptions. It was a global event of a series of eruptions during that time. Enormous amounts of particulates, sulfur dioxide. That would include the cosmic rays. So it was just like this perfect mix of volcanism, cosmic ray density increases causing cloud cover from 15,000. 18,000 feet like we're seeing right now the only thing we lack in this impending grand solar minimum is the volcanism that's going to accompany it in the last of the Chun dynasties it was segmented into four different parts but they were just picking up the pieces of what was left over in the previous southern Chun that got wiped out by this same event their strength and ability and grow food for their citizens not happening they were quickly replaced by the Sui dynasty if you look at the Chinese timeline, you can actually see where the grand solar minimums are. This is not so much a Chinese timeline as it is a grand solar minimum collapsing dynasty after dynasty after society after society timeline. These fit and match grand solar minimums and Chinese dynasty collapses. And then you can start to see it in other parts of the world as well. Now, if you don't think in that fashion, if you want to see the GSIP ice cores, overlaid with the collapse of the Chinese dynasties from 1000 AD to present. This is the overlap that I created for you. Every time there's a temperature drop, there is a change in the rulership. This is a planetary thing. It's not just exclusively to the Chinese dynasties. It was to the empires, South American, Roman, 
Central American. It is a all-encompassing global event. Why did these out a little bit clearer for you to see? 2024 is on the right side. Left side is 578. After that catastrophe of all the volcanism, the societies were trying to pick up the pieces and wham, they were crushed by the Justinian plague. Not sure if it's common to meteors bringing something in the atmosphere or people's immune systems are just so degraded and weak from lack of proper nutrition, but these all go hand in hand. It's not a single event. It is a set of events that come together with repetitive accuracy. 79 AD, we see the same thing. Mount Vesuvius, that was a grand solar minimum. Volcanism all over the planet at that time. And here we are again. Now, it's going to be one of these that we're going to repeat in this next grand solar minimum. The Landshite minimum or the Eddy minimum, whichever you prefer to call it. I firmly believe now this is not going to be a 400 year cooling event. This is going to be something on the 1,500 to 2,000 year cooling event that's going to strike our planet. We can predict with accuracy when these grand solar minimums intensify, we are in it. We are taking the next step down next year. 2018 is a step down year. The coldest period is going to come around 2024. Isn't that magical the way it matches up planetarily with the highest volcanism during each of these grand solar minimum cycles? The ancients tried to code these changes into their myths and legends. And this time our technology will allow us to thrive during the grand solar minimum. In my last podcast, talking with Ted Marshalldon from Omega Gardens, rotary grow system works like this. A single unit is coupled into a vertical system that can then be put inside containers and the amount of food coming out of this can absolutely supply a full city if implemented correctly. What other technologies do you see around you that could be a benefit for us to supplement our food growing when the grand solar minimum intensifies? Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video.